both of you have a very interesting love story and uh, we like to hear from you. You were both 17 when you first met, is that right? Yes. We actually, our 45th anniversary of meeting was yesterday. Oh, happy anniversary oh. of meeting. <laughs> 31st of May was, we met in uh, 1975. You were and, not born yeah, I think. tell us about this meeting. Oh, I, oh, I was born, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, it was uh, actually a meeting of faith. And, faith. Uh, yeah, faith as in universal faith. We were meant for each other uh, because we were not supposed to go for my, it was my cousin's 21st birthday party. And uh, she actually... His parents his, forced him to go. My two bro elder brothers didn't want to go, so I was forced to go. And she, on the other hand, came down from Kwantan, and her cousin was, was invited, and she was forced to go as well. And that's how we met. So were you introduced by someone, a mutual friend or a cousin, or did your no, we eyes younger, meet yeah. in that party, and then it just, you know, sparks flew? No, uh, we were the youngest there, because everybody else was 20-something. So we ended up sitting next to each other, talking and uh, debating and arguing. That's how we met. <laughs> what were you debating or arguing about at that time? Because I'm from Kwantan, very small town at that time. So I was like uh, very innocent and goody two-shoes. So we were arguing about KL girls and Kwantan girls and things like that. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> then after that, what happened after that chance meeting? The the attraction, I think, was quite instant, uh, and uh, but not as, love. as as usual. Yeah, it was just an attraction. Yeah, and I actually eventually did ask for her number, and she was playing hard to get. Uh, <laughs> Don't call me; I'll call you. So I said, "Okay, fine. I'll give you my number," and she did. We wrote to each other. Wrote letters from Kwantan yeah, to KL. Yeah, yes. correct. So, All right. Um, after that, I, I was overseas. So it was a long distance relationship. It was she just went, by the she, she went for nurse. After about a year, she went to UK for her nursing. Uh, and we used to write to each other every day, like so much in love, you know. Uh, not even waiting for the reply of each other's letters and then we reply in the next letter, that sort of thing. <laughs> but what, what you said the attraction was almost instant at that time. So when did you sort of officially became a couple? Uh, I think a few months later yeah. when I had to come down again to do my visa and to make my arrangements for my overseas trip. Uh, that's, that's when we got together again and met his parents. So it started there. Well, back then, you meet the parents first even before you started the relationship. Yeah, because uh, when I, I'm from Kwantan. So when I come to KL, I either stay with my cousin or he, his parents say, come and stay with us. We had a spare room at the time. Uh, so I went and uh, stayed over at his house. Incidentally, she became the new favourite child after that. <laughs> <laughs> because his parents have three boys. I'm so, the youngest. Uh, so uh, meeting me, I became their favorite, the only girl. <laughs> so they took you in from the first instance. There were no problems with like, uh, or, so for Fred, there was no problem like, uh, Ma, Dad, this is my girlfriend. And they've already accepted her from the get-go. Yes. Especially my dad was very taken up with her. <laughs> like I said, I was replaced as the favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Ask both of you this question. What attracted you to each other? What was it about Fred Rose that attracted you to him? He was funny, very witty. He was always making uh, smart comments, which made me laugh. And that's what I liked about him. Until now, he's always making some witty comments. Yeah. So there's a lot of laughter. <laughs> I liked her straightforwardness. And, you know, for... Uh, 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 lady to actually stand up and speak out for herself was that was what attracted me. She was straightforward and honest. Mm. Yeah, I say it like it is. I, I, you know, I don't believe in 
trying to evade the question or beat around the bush, it's always with me. It's uh, say it like this. So because I'm like that as well, so I, you know, I found it. Yeah, it's it's nice to have somebody who is not agreeing with you all the time. There has to be disagreements and has been going on from day one. <laughs> but you guys, were, you, know, you guys were, you guys like your, I mean, looks wise also, it did like you guys were both pleasant on the eyes as well, right? Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All those years ago. <laughs> were you both each other's first boyfriend, girlfriend? For me, it was. Uh, for him, second. Second. <laughs> and he was very honest with that from the from the beginning. Yes, yes. Until now, we always practice honesty. Mm. Even if you had made a mistake or anything, you must be honest and let the person know about it. Mm. Because if you tell one lie, this is what my mom taught me. To cover that one lie, you have to tell another 10 more lies. Mm. So she, she always says, you better just say it as it is. So that's our policy. I love that policy. <laughs> <laughs> Won't get you in trouble. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Now, it's Rose, you went. Difficult. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was saying, and it's very difficult to lie because, you know, it's um, if you're telling one lie, you're like thinking how to cover that lie. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, it makes you your life saying? difficult as well. Yeah, correct. So sometimes it's very difficult to surprise her because she'll say, You've got that look that you're hiding something. <laughs> No, it's nothing. But then again, you know, how are you going to be surprised when you say, no, you got that guilty look? <laughs> so white lies are okay, lah. Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, in fact, yeah, white lies are okay. But for this man, he doesn't even tell a white lie. If he doesn't like me, in a, a certain, like if I say I buy in a dress, and if I say, do you think I look good? He still always say, no, horrible. <laughs> you know, he won't even... Uh, be tactful and say no. I think maybe the color doesn't suit you. No, you're straight away saying no. Nope. It is horrible. Blunt truth. <laughs> He's always been like that. He he didn't change after marriage. He's always been like that, or yeah. did he change after marriage? No, still the same. Both of us actually are always us. It's always me. She's always her. Mm. So that's one of the good the things that we we both. That's why we get along. Okay. Now, Rose, you went to the UK to study uh, yeah. for two years, was it? Just then you were saying? Yeah. Yeah. What, what did Fred think about it? Did you ask her to stay in Malaysia instead? No. It was her choice, her career. And even if she... I, I told her even if she wanted to stay on and further and, you know, uh, get uh, some sort of like degree and stuff like that, you please stay on because it's your life, it's your career. Mm. But she was missing me too much, so she had to come back. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. True? So she Is that the... true, Rose? Yeah, because actually I was fine there. For a year and a half, I was okay. Mm -hmm. Then he decided to come and visit me there. And that was it. And when he came back, I was so miserable. I had to come back. <laughs> really That's your so tactic, anything. Fred. I know, that was your tactic that time. <laughs> No, the choice is always hers. <laughs> Until today, the choice is always hers. <laughs> but I have a bit of influence, you know, with what I say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine, I mean, if she were to tell you, I'm going to stay back to the UK to further my studies or to get some work experience here, what would you have done? I would have, by all means, do. And no, go no, join her there, Mabel. Because, huh? because she, made, she made a very good nurse. And she would have gone actually a lot further. Uh, could have been even a sister today. Matron. Uh, a matron, a matron, or whatever. Uh, because they loved her uh, where she worked in the hospitals in the UK. Because they're student, they have practical as well. So I said, it's, it's up to you. I said, you, you, you can make a career out of it. Why not stay? Maybe in a couple of years, I come over or something like that. You know, mm. We can work something out. Mm -mm. Uh, but she says, says no, she wanted to come back, so. So he okay, was very great. supportive. Yeah. So he was very supportive of you um, pursuing your own career. Yes, yes, definitely. So that's why when I came back, 
uh, we were always we were not together again because I was a flight attendant with MAS. So half the time I was away again. <laughs> yeah, she was lucky enough to get a job uh, in MAS, and uh, so you know <laughs> that was it. And I was a tractor mechanic at the time. Um, so I get outstation trips to go and look after certain sites for about a month and then she goes off. So sometimes we don't see each other maybe for a couple of months. <laughs> Were you already married at that point or not yet? No. Yes. Uh, we were married in We were married in 79. Yeah. Almost yeah, somewhere almost. there. <clears throat> so it was a long distance relationship all throughout your courtship and like getting to know each other face? Yeah. Yeah. Most so, of the time, yeah. Okay. So how did you keep that long distance relationship alive in the days of where there were no technology like how we have now? Letters. Letters and uh, phone calls. And not mobile phone. Those days it was, uh, you know, the landlines. Land land the one that you had to go mm. down, round and round. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. did you have to spend a lot of money on, on on phone calls at that time? Long distance phone calls. Sometimes, well, uh, but it didn't matter when you're in so much in love. It doesn't matter. You know? yeah. <laughs> but doesn't it get challenging though? I mean, because for a lot of people, even now with technology, with Zoom, with WhatsApp, whatever, it's still challenging. And then those those doubts start to set in. Is is there another person there? I, I should be there. That's a lot that happens. Didn't you guys ever have any doubts? No, because really. I think we were very confident of our love for each other. Yeah, es I especially in younger days, you know, everybody had an eye for her because she's so good looking. And uh, guys used to flirt with her and stuff like that. And sometimes when we go out, or rather a lot of the times when we go out, we do our own thing, we mix with everybody. And at the end of the day, some of them say, you guys are together. It's like, you know, what? You're doing flirting with the girls. The guys are flirting with her. And yeah, but at the end of the day, we still go back together. That's the end of the story. <laughs> All right. It's, it's a lot of trust. Yeah. It's a lot of trust for each other. Trust. Mm. Very important in a marriage. I think trust is the, the most important. Honesty and trust. What was the, what was the catalyst to getting married though? Since both of you were pursuing your own careers at that time also, and uh, you know, there were bits where the, you, you were, had long-distance relationship, what was the catalyst of marriage? A teeny little bit of parent pressure. <laughs> parent yeah. pressure? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, because we were living together, which was another thing again, you know. Then the best part is the relatives, when we got married, they started counting. So my mother told them, Please count all your fingers and toes. Rose is not pregnant. They just got married. They just wanted to get married. <laughs> yeah, because the first thing people think, you know, if you're young and you're getting married, oh my, she must be pregnant. Actually, mm -hmm. it wasn't that. Because we were 21 when we got married. Okay. So, there were people generally don't get married at 21 these days anymore. Though. I mean, yeah. even back then, 21, was it a very young age even back then? Yeah, I, I think it was. It but, was a bit young, but, but we our, were so sure our children is sort of like, because they all got married, what, 23, 24? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> also, it's still very young for these days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm. But did you spend some time apart even after you were married? Um, not really, because um, that time was I doing international? Yeah. Yeah, airlines, yeah. because of the airlines. Uh, back then, then he was already just posted here. He doesn't go out station. Only me, la, I, I used to have a lot of uh, international flights. Mm. So, and that doesn't take very long, maybe two, three days. Maximum and a uh, week. workload in the house is always shared. In fact, when she goes for flight and come back, the house is even cleaner than when she left. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you know, we spoke to several... Do is yeah. Okay, we've spoken to several couples also and a lot of times uh, these men, they help with the house chores. I think yes. that is the secret to a happy marriage when men help yes. with the house chores. <laughs> it's one true. Of, one it's, of the reasons. It's one true of, yeah. because if not, you get so upset that you are doing all the things 
and maybe he's just sitting watching TV. So when he helps out, the appreciation is there. Mm. And the kids were all still small, so she had to cook a few dishes when she goes for her flights, and I'll just heat up the food. That's the only thing I couldn't do was cook. Other than that, was the children were all taken care of. So how long so were you? How long were you a stewardess for, Rose? Um, all in all, about twelve years. Because when I got pregnant, I resigned, huh. and then later, I mean, I called back the crew because they were short of uh, crew. And so I went flying mothers. Flying mothers. So I went back as a flying mother. <laughs> but how about your nursing? Your nursing degree from the UK. You did not become a nurse. Yeah. No, I still have uh, knowledge on my nursing, whatever I learned. So. I teach my children when they were small. I make them all sit down and teach them CPR and you know in case you bleed or whatever. Mm-hmm. The in-house but that knowledge got to be good for it to be a flight attendant, right? Pardon? Knowledge? That knowledge, oh. being a nurse, it's got to be it's got to be an added advantage to be a flight attendant, yes, yes. I suppose. Yes, it is. But because were your I parents have... disappointed though? They they sent you all the way to the UK to take a nursing degree. De- that nursing course, but you came back and became a flight attendant yes. instead. Yes, <laughs> but they they were disappointed, but, but she paid for herself. She actually took a loan and went to UK and mm. to, to study nursing. Mm. So um, I mean, although they were disappointed, I think they were much happier later because she got an airline job. So you know, like I said, pays more. <laughs> But she was away most of the time in the early stages of your marriage. How how did that work out? Actually, the later stage, because early stage, you were only flying small aircraft. That was before marriage. After we married, I was on the international one. Ah. But it, like I said, uh, it's not many days. Maximum, I think, was a week, those days. Mm. Uh, because the flights were fewer, so you have to night stop longer. Yeah. But other than that, it's about two, three days. So and Fred, you had to be the stay-at-home dad when, when Rose is away? Yes. Yeah, we I actually, always make sure. At one stage, I did not work for two years. I just took care of the kids. Hmm. Yeah, we didn't want to leave the kids with any, uh, anybody. Did you finally learn how to cook though? He did not learn how to cook. Oh. <laughs> to this day, he can't fry an I egg. I can only do egg and rice. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I used to cook and freeze freeze and then uh, he heats up i guess he's still letting you uh you know have that that control in the kitchen i guess yeah not control uh, she's a pretty good cook so <laughs> only? uh even the all the friends whenever she cooks uh, because at one time we used to run a pub uh and she used to cook for the pub you know sometimes give free meals and stuff like that which uh, the customers just love her cooking. Mm. So we'll leave the, ex- the expert work to the experts. <laughs> <laughs> but how did you feel about that though, Fred, that, where, that uh, your wife is away working and you are at home, cook- not cooking, but cleaning and taking care of the kids? That was the main concern, actually, the kids. The whole, I mean, I would, wouldn't say the whole purpose, but the purpose of getting married is to have kids and, you know, bring them up uh, the best way you can. Mm. So I guess I was more occupied with that. Of course, missing her and stuff like that. But, you know, things had to be done. It had to be done. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. Because the, the real missing part was when she was in UK. Mm. So in comparison to that, the flights away one week, three days, five days wasn't that bad. Mm. What yeah. is that, right? Huh? Yeah, I, I mean, just a week, it's not nothing compared to it. had she continued nursing, yeah, staying yeah. in the UK long term. Then yeah. that, that would have, well, how different would that have been? If you had continued nursing, if you had become a nurse, how different would things have been actually for the two of you? I think I probably would have gone there, migrated there. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, he probably would. <laughs> now let's talk about children. You said that um, the whole point that of getting married is to raise a family, is to have children, correct? Yeah. Uh, and you only had children after being married for what? Two, three years? Was three, it? Yeah. Three years, yeah. Three years. Yeah. After three years. In fact, all my three kids are all accidents and they were the best accidents we ever made. Okay. 
And we got one so girl, one boy, you... one girl. Okay. Why, why did you, you say they were accidents? You get one girl, one boy, one girl. <laughs> <laughs> so did you not want to have kids that soon? Was that why you, you say that they're accidents? Because uh, at that time, because of her flying. Mm. Once you get pregnant, you have to resign. Yeah. Later on, uh, they changed the policy that you can actually go on maternity leave. But during my time, no, you have to resign. Mm. Mm. Um, were we, no, we, we, we just sat down and discussed and made the choice that we will have the baby and not the, the job doesn't matter. You know, we can always get another job. No, but was there a plan, say, or oh, maybe I will, we will get married for five years first before we have our first Yeah, of course, of course there was yeah. a plan that, you know, we'll enjoy ourselves for five years. But, um... That's you, the problem with planning. When you do things impromptu, <laughs> that's the best, the best way and everything happens correctly. <laughs> yeah, true. Actually, it, it was a blessing in disguise, I guess. Yeah. Mm. So now you have three, you have three children, uh, yes, seven grandkids. Wonderful adults. Seven grandkids, yeah. Yeah, seven. <clears throat> Do you think that having children and building a family is essential to making the marriage stronger? No, I don't think so. But there, um, I think it's a bonus. When you have kids, it's a bonus because it, you will never uh, know how much a mother feels about her child or a father. Uh, until they have one. I think it also helps with the bonding of the parents. It, it makes them closer when you have kids. <clears throat> or argue yeah, even more no, about the kids. Huh? Or oh, argue yeah, even more always, about yeah. the kids. Oh, yes, yes. She's always, it's okay, it's okay. And I'm always, no, 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 there are rules, there are rules, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's always the kids' side. He's a disciplinary master in the house. I'm the one that they all come to, you know, if they are upset or yeah. anything. <clears throat> Do you feel like once the kids are all grown and they've gone out of the house, that you both feel more connected after that? Actually, our kids never grow up. They're always with us. <laughs> Forget about the kids, the grandkids, they're always with us too. <laughs> and you love that? Yeah. Yes, of course. We you never wanted. You don't want to have just you know your your. Uh, in Chinese, they call it the just the couple couples time. Yeah, that's what a lot of friends of ours tell us. He said, "What the hell? You already look after your children, and then you're going looking after your grandchildren." They said it's a pleasure for us. We love having them around. Yeah. So you know, it's it's just the way people want to look at things. Mm. But we're always happy to have the family around. Although it's not a very big one, but. You know, nevertheless, it's a joy, especially with the grandkids. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. I'm sure through your 40 over years of being married, you've gone through some ups and downs, you know, through Plenty. life. Yeah. yeah. What, what, would, what would you say is the biggest challenge in your marriage? And how did you overcome it? Maybe Tolerance. <laughs> is that yeah, challenging? Tolerant. That's the biggest challenge for you? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> because when you are married so long, uh, you tend to take each other for granted. Mm -hmm. And that's not a good thing to take each other for granted because uh, like him, if, if I'm angry with him or anything like that, I would straight away tell him I'm angry with you. I don't keep it in my heart and don't talk to him for a few days. No, I don't do that. Straight away, I'll tell him, you know, I'm sick that's and tired. One thing, that's one thing about us. No matter how bad the boys, you know, <laughs> we may go to sleep angry, uh, not talking because just can't agree on a point, but we never go a day without talking to each other. You yeah. make up and trash it out and then, you know, there's no animosity mm. and that's how you will get along in life much better. Yeah, I feel that if you keep it inside, inside you, it's only going to eat you up. Mm. So it's better to just... Talk it out and then, and why waste time fighting with when you can actually spend that time loving? Mm. You know? So, how do you keep the love alive uh, over such a long period of time? Do you go for like date nights or do you surprise, uh, Fred, do you surprise Rose with romantic gestures once no, no, in a no, while? No, 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 not romantic at all. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> not. The first time he ever bought me a dozen of roses for my birthday, I actually took a photograph of it and kept it. So that I said, this is to remember that you actually bought. <laughs> <laughs> that was right after about five years. Yeah. Yeah, about five years. How did he propose then? He didn't propose, we just talked about it. And I, actually, she, I, she. I told him, would you like to get married? And then he says, uh, no, la, let me earn some extra money and buy a house. and All right. But, but do you still go on dates now? Or like, how do you keep the love alive between the two of you? I'm sure it's, can, can you keep the love alive by just being honest with each other? By you know when they say eternal flame? It- <laughs> when you love okay. somebody, you, to us, uh, especially to me, I think, I know both of us, is that love is, is there, you don't see it, but you feel it all the time. Mm. And from day one until now, it just grows. And then it becomes, I wouldn't say a normal thing, but I would say it is always there. And it's also good, like sometimes when both of us sit, sitting down and having a drink together, mm. we start talking about the old times and how excited we were when we, you know, see each other and things like that. So it you sort of relive a part of you know a part of those those days mm. and until now when i'm making his coffee in the mornings yeah. he'll come and hug me from the back and tell me he loves me oh so, so sweet that's really romantic yeah. <laughs> i'm not the buying kind of chocolates and flowers <laughs> and stuff like that <laughs> yeah you know there are times uh when he i tell him i said did you get me anything for my birthday he says why you have me I'm your present. <laughs> Technically, that's true, though. <laughs> <laughs> For both of us. So she does the same thing back to me now. <laughs> he is that type of husband, I think. <laughs> yes, I'm like, you know, I you am your me. gift. I'm your biggest present. <laughs> yeah, <correct. laughs> you know, we've spoken to a lot of couples and they always say that marriage is a lot of work. Like, you have to work to keep the marriage together. But that doesn't seem to be the case for the both of you. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know why they say you have to work at it. Mm. What is that to work at it? Yeah, of course, like... Um, it is maybe what they mean or, or how we feel is it is a work in progress. Mm. You know, everybody got their faults and their bad habits and stuff like that. And it's a work in progress. You learn to live with it. You learn to, you know, blend in with it. And that's how... The we problem. learn to accept each other's faults. Fault. Mm. If you don't accept the fault, then it'll bug you, you know. Like there are little things that he does also bugs me. But I learned to okay, lah, that's him. So just leave it. So, so you don't think you don't think it's a lot of work. If if it is uh if you have the love there, then it's not a lot of work. It's yeah. not a lot of work, but it's a work in progress mm. over the years. Yeah. And then when you come to our stage, it's like, ah, uh, okay, that's norm. You know, it's sort of like, uh, if, if you know you I, I know you're going to get irritated with something that I do, then I just don't do it. Or certain days, I just do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> just just irritate her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll be loving Debbie for too long. Okay, let's have a fight. <laughs> Do you think that's necessary? Do you think arguments are necessary in a a, a marriage? Because I mean, yes. I've been with my husband, like we've been together for 20 years now. Uh, I've been married for about 10. And I don't remember ever arguing with him. And I don't know whether that's healthy or not. It Maybe for some people it is. Yeah, it depends. If, if you don't have a reason to argue, why? No, don't argue. <laughs> But like both of us, we are, we are both have our own opinion about things and we don't give up. So if I think I'm right, I will argue with him and then we, we start an argument. <laughs> so we have that, from day one, we've had that sort of character, that mm. rapport to go with and well... It works for us. Yeah. Some people, they argue and then they keep it, like I said, no, next mm. day don't talk, two, three days don't talk. That's, that shouldn't be the case. Yeah. If you really love somebody, you'll find a way to make up. <clears throat> so how do you resolve most of your arguments then? 
Well, somebody has to give in. So, the next day, somebody <laughs> does give in. <laughs> I agree to disagree, but okay. Whatever. <laughs> so is is the wife know. always right then, Fred? No. No? No. <laughs> <laughs> and neither am I. So, when in actual cases where I, you actually realize that you're wrong, you say, okay, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Admit your fault. Yeah. Yeah. What is, what is your secret then to your long-lasting marriage? What do you think is your secret between the both Trust of you? And honesty. Yeah, I, I think uh, in any marriage, that is very, very important to be really honest about your feelings and, uh, and the trust. If he goes anywhere, like he goes out with his friends and all that, for me, I'm fine with it. Mm -hmm. You know, I... I it never enters my mind that there will be somebody, someone else. Mm. It goes both ways. Uh. Yeah. So, you know, not like if she goes out and she's late, okay, I'll be back about 12, maybe you'll come back about 1. To both of us, we think, yeah, you probably got carried away and you're enjoying with your friends. You know, you don't like call and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, maybe a text to say, are you safe? That's about it. You know? Mm. Are you safe? Yeah, you're fine. Good. Have a good time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So the trust is there, the honesty is there. Does it take a Some long people, time get to gain a, a trust, like a trust like no other? Yes, it does take a long time to really, really trust somebody. Like now, if he tells me anything, I, I am very sure that it is honest. It's, it is the honest truth. Mm. Unless you it's know? a white lie though. <laughs> But you don't tell, you white, don't lies, tell white lies, <laughs> according to Rose. Yeah. He's, yeah. How about you, uh, Rose? Do you have any other secrets that you would like to share with us to your long-lasting marriage? Not really. I, I, I think um, we take each day as it comes. Oh, Especially yes. at this age. Huh, that There's we... one thing though in marriage. Uh, there's a saying that goes... If, if it's broken, fix it. Don't throw it away. Mm. That's very important in a, in a marriage. Instead of going, you see there are so many divorces and separations and stuff like that. Mm. Don't throw it away. If it's broken, fix it. Mm. That'll be. What do you think is the difference between your generation compared to the? No, I'm not saying every. Uh, couple in the new generation uh, easily out for a divorce. But what's the difference between? Uh, couples in your generation compared to to ours? I think your generation, uh, you have had uh, got too much of um, influence, I guess, or uh, social media. I believe, I, I believe actually it's tolerance. I think the older generation have more tolerance yeah. towards the, the other person, you know. Mm -hmm. And if it's annoying or whatever, we just take it with a pinch of salt. I think younger generation, they tend to, you know, get upset easily and that's where the problem starts. And also, I think yeah. technology, la, we don't write letters anymore, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Maybe yeah. we should start writing love letters again. I still no, have I'm all fine. the no, letters. No, no. <laughs> we have a bag full of letters that I have written to him and he wrote to me and all the cards and everything is in a, a, a bag. I still have it. It's for my grandchildren to read it one of one day. <laughs> so people back then were more romantic then in a way, you think? Romantic with words, I guess. You know, with words and uh, the way you say things. Mm. Like now everything is short form. So I guess <laughs> even if you want to tell somebody I love you, it's just I heart you. You. <laughs> you. <laughs> those days it was all flowery that's from the deepest from my deep heart and you know all those things it doesn't nice. feel it doesn't feel as sincere anymore nowadays right because everything yeah. is shortened everything is in the like you know you can send a yeah. short message message to someone say I miss you that kind of thing and it doesn't feel video call yeah yeah <laughs> and I think everybody is in too much of a rush mm. that's exactly. it <laughs> yeah you didn't take the time to actually show your feelings, you know? So, Letters are very romantic, actually. 
if you read, when sometimes when you sit down and read all of it, oh my God, did I just, did I write that? Did I say that? You know? <laughs> did you create Email also can, of writing? <laughs> <laughs> Email also can, right? Oh uh, yeah. Email also can, yeah. As long as you've got some proof, <laughs> like, you know, that's written down. Okay. They'll hold up in the code of law. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, uh, Fred and Rose, uh, finally, what advice would you give to newlyweds or even married couples who are struggling to sort of keep their marriage alive right now? What advice would you give these couples? I think we'll trust be... is one very important thing. Yeah, yeah. To fully trust and you know, really fully trust. I mean, from the heart. Yeah. Honesty is very important as well, and I think tolerance is equally yeah. as important. Yeah. Uh, and how also, do you build trust as newlyweds, though? Uh, I guess if you say you, you say something. Say what you mean. Say what you mean. Mm. Don't just say it for the sake of saying it. You know. You say and you're going to come back at 7 p.m., come back yeah. at 7 p.m., yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, correct. That will be the trust that you will slowly gain. Mm. And, uh, and I also think very important is um, never think that you are infallible. You know, you, everybody makes mistakes. So as if you can make some mistakes, the next person, you should accept that that person is also can make mistakes. Mm. So... I think to accept lah, to accept each other for what they are, I guess. Um, and to forgive as well if the other person yeah. does anything. Mm, always. Yeah. Yeah. And forgive has to be really forgive and not just say, okay, lah, I forgive you, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Do you both say sorry to each other if, if you've done anything wrong? Yes. And we still we still say please and thank you. You know, some couples, they forget, they just yeah. take you for granted. They, yeah. hello, where's my coffee? But, and then if he ever tells me, can I have a coffee? I'll stand there. Please. Uh, okay. <laughs> manners. I like that. It's all about manners. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much, Fred and Rose.